it, exactly and god knows this right because again you go back to genesis 9 right you no know, it gets off the ark and the first prohibition is do not drink blood right that's the first thing god tells no one not to do yeah do not drink blood because the life is therein so isn't that interesting because he's just coming out of being around how many millions of nephilim giants who are drinking blood right so i think yeah they they of course they have higher science they have higher mathematics higher you know architecture all those things right we're just we're you know it's almost like if you think about it you know it's like the four dimension the fourth dimension right each lower dimension is it like you said you said the echoes i see it as like a shadow right like our shadow is just a two-dimensional version of ourselves and i believe that we in the realm now we are the shadow of the, the supernatural realm All right, welcome back to Blurry Creatures. We're going back. We're going back old school. We're we're going. You know, we talk a lot about the golden age, and we talk a lot about you know, sort of the, this what happened in the beginning. But then every once in a while, Luke, we we've been getting into things like this modern phenomenon, weird things like cattle mutilations. We haven't really talked about it. Crop circles, UFO sightings, Bigfoot sightings, all these things that are happening present day. What are the paranormal things that are happening today? A lot of uh, farmers will say that, you know, select number of their cattle go missing and then they'll come back and they'll be drained as if somebody just took them inside, you know, some sort of some sort of lab and just suck their blood out of it and then put it back perfectly. And then it's untouched. Nobody leaves it. Nobody. Nothing's eating on it. It's like this crazy phenomenon that's happening all over the place. So we've talked to a few guys here and there, but we're going to we're going to go into depth with Ryan Peterson today, author and researcher and kind of what is yeah, he discovered and it's great to have ryan you know ryan back he was on episode 18 so we go way back in time machine this will be his fourth appearance ryan's a, a great a great guy written some amazing books on on the nephilim and you've know, been a great friend of the show and, and as you said this is this is a really interesting topic I and mean, this is something that that we're seeing in pop culture there was even this year there was a mass cattle mutilation in texas there was an episode on skinwalker ranch which uh, dealt directly with you know, a cattle mutilation and, and then the carcass not being touched. So a lot of weird things around very surgical removal of body parts, no blood, and trying to make sense of, of what's happening here. And Ryan has spoken on this topic and done a bunch of research. He's a you know pre- preeminent researcher. He, being an author and a writer, he does a ton of work looking into stuff. And, and so we're very excited to, to have Ryan back, back in the Blurryverse and to talk about you know, one of those fascinating things that's happening here and now that really doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, law enforcement really can't make heads or tails of this because it's so bizarre and yet it seems so meticulous. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem like an animal attack. It doesn't seem like, unless you have a surgeon with a plasma cutter or a laser or it's out there with a scalpel taking apart an animal mm-hmm. in the middle of, of nowhere. It, it just doesn't make sense. And and it, I think the crop circle thing is, is a very good analogy to what we're going to be talking about today because in the same way that some of the things that are created in crops, and we, we did an episode on that um, about what's happening in the UK specifically, are so intricate and so bizarre and they happen overnight that it, it's really tough to to make, you know, sort of a, a conventional conclusion. It happens all over the world. I mean, you have cases in New Zealand, U- U- the UK, here in the United States, and and rural areas where people aren't... I mean, you got to th- think about this. This is people's livelihood. I mean, if you have land and you have some cows on it, I mean, this, they're not cheap. They're expensive. And to have them go missing, have them get eaten, and you, you spend all your time and energy trying to protect these things. And then, you know, losing, 10, losing five, six cows is thousands of dollars. You know 10 grand 15 grand for for these animals so it's 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 really sad and 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 it's not like someone's gonna be playing a hoax in small town texas right. you know it just doesn't make any sense so let's get ryan on this one if you if you're not a member of the show and you want to support what luke and i are doing here blurrycreatures.com slash members uh come on down we got a lot of bonus perks for you to sponsor the show we got events coming up this next year and you can get tickets to those early you can uh, chat with us and hop into some of our exclusive channels like Facebook, Discord, Telegram, etc. So come on in, right? Hair tips. Sometimes we'll give, Beer give you tips. those on the Facebook. Group. Hair tips. Beer. All the above, Nate. 
all the above but uh, ryan's one of our favorites and uh i'm, I'm excited to get back on we need a, we need a like a pre-show sh- slogan so the bone zone doesn't really work today nate let's let let's let the juice loose huh <laughs> let's let the juice yeah. loose there you go all right okay i like that it works it's a good it's a good, it's a good meeting good meeting of the minds The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. This is the opposite. All right. Well, let's let's get into it. Welcome back to the podcast, Ryan Peterson, author, researcher. You're doing a ton of things. Obviously, your Judgment of the Nephilim book is sort of how you came onto the scene in the Nephilim and, and talking about all these weird things. I like your shirt. Ask me about the Nephilim. Luke and I started a podcast about the Nephilim, and little did we know how crazy it would get. I've got a basement full of Camp Nephilim shirts. And all. Uh, we've been shipping merch like crazy for Black Friday. And and welcome back to the podcast. I got to get one of those shirts is what I wanted to say. Yeah. But uh, you've been on this. This is our fourth time back on the show, back on Blurry Creatures. And by by now, Lo- Luke and I know a little bit, little bit more than we did when we started the show. So, you know, we've, we've talked to everyone in this space just about, and we always enjoy having people come back on because it feels like developing more of a friendship and a relationship and we can kind of just have fun, tell some jokes and just do what we do on Blurry Creatures, which Luke and I don't really take ourselves too serious. But I know all the researchers do and you guys are hard at work all the time. So we appreciate you coming on our show, giving us a little insight into what you've been discovering. And today we were we were kicking around the idea of talking about cattle mutilations and uh it's this strange thing that happens. So we we talked to a few guests off the off the cuff. David Politis, we talked about elk, how these UFOs were out and taking elk and like sometimes sort of like a tractor being like sucking them up into the ship and then like and it's just this these bizarre stories we hear of like, okay, if this extraterrestrial phenomenon is going on, this UFO phenomenon is going on, what why are they taking animals? And then we talked to a cop who who went on to a bunch of calls in Colorado who was showing up and these things are like it's just bones and skin and they're like sucked dry and they're just laying there and then a couple times it looked as though they were like embedded into the ground as if something dropped them from some crazy height and they they're dead but they're on the ground but there's no like you would think that this thing would be sort of exploded all over the place but it's not so some re- really interesting things welcome back to the show <laughs> no, and i want to say, i want to say what, ryan that like one of the things that, that i know you talked about this and and you actually presented at prophecy watchers and and with some of our friends namely derek gilbert and and sharon who uh you know we've got to become pretty good friends with derek but yeah, fascinating phenomena and, and and i know that there are a lot of connections people make a lot of connections with ufos not exactly sure in some ways, we don't really know what's going on, right? That I know that a lot of this phenomenon became is not new, but it really come to light. And I think some of it is Skinwalker Ranch, right? The show Skinwalker Ranch actually has had a few yeah, of these things yeah. that that happen. And what you get is bizarre stuff, like tongues removed, like surgical cuts, like you know, naughty parts. I don't know how else to say this. I think it used to be like you tell your kids, yeah, you know, don't 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 hit dad in the swimsuit area, right? Like th- th- that's yeah. the uh, <laughs> no, but but this is there's really bizarre things that are happening and, and there's an absence of blood. And th- this is not just like on Skinwalker Ranch. This is not just in, in these one-off cases with, with, with Politis or whoever. This is kind of a crazy phenomenon where people, your ranchers, especially who are not ufologists or cryptologists, cryptozoologists or researchers are having these bizarre mutilations. In fact, sometimes surgical mutilations of, of their livestock. You know, most situations we can't make really heads of tails of what's going on. That's why I was excited to have you on. We we've been tackling some topics. I think in the last, you know, we have, it was, we were just joking before the pre roll. You know, I think the last time we had you on was almost a hundred episodes ago. And there's a few things that Nate and I have done in the last, you know, twenty thirty episodes. We did one on, on crop circles, for example. That's just very specific about some of these weird phenomena that that become somewhat mainstream as far as as the the awareness of it. But 
when you get into the nuts and bolts of what's going on, like there's there's very few people that have really looked into this and delve into this and done the research. And so grateful to have you on and really interested to hear, to hear your thoughts on, on this and and perhaps its connection to the uh, UFO UAP phenomena and sort of what you you've dug up because I know that in your free time, <laughs> this is what these are the things you get into. We were just talking about how you're gonna gonna wrap up the corporate world here and 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 really dive into the things that you love to do and. I'm going to let you go. Ryan Peterson, welcome back to Blurry Creatures. It's grateful to have you. Your fourth time. The old silver, <laughs> the old silver sombreros we were saying, the, uh, like I think it was the 80s or 90s. Uh, we used to, there was this, I don't remember, we were West Coast kids, so we grew up, and I it was probably watching the Giants or A's, but there was an announcer who, if you struck out four times, you got the silver sombrero. Um, in this case, you're not striking out. You're hitting home runs, so this is some ways you're batting for the cycle because uh, it's great it. to have That's you it. back. But uh, en- enough there of these is. guys yakking. Um, no, no, it's all good. good. Have, it's good all to good. Have you. Yeah. yeah, great to be back on, honestly. And it's and, and not only is it my fourth time for the silver sombrero for the cycle. Um also, you know, I, I say you know, now that you guys first of all, congratulations on getting over two hundred episodes. Oh, thank it's you. just absolutely amazing. And man, I was I was, you know, I always I was listening to lots of tons of your content, you know, just leading up in the last couple of weeks. I can't believe that I was actually my first episode was episode eighteen. Let's go, bro. You are an OG. You, oh, you are. Yeah. Oh, well, thank hey, you. Hey, there you go. You, I, I, I am flexing my OG right, status. You caped up. You blurry. caped up and, and and took us for a ride early on. I loved it. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, I, so I'm just honestly, it's mind blowing. Um, you know, when you see how you can go from 18 to 207, but also just the impact that you guys have had. Because for me, I mean, you talk about conferences. It's I was really impacted, you know, Dr. Michael Heiser, of course, passed away early this year. And, you know, I, I actually didn't know him. I actually, I mean, I knew, I knew him out. Everyone else knew him. I never, we never like were at the same conference or event, but it was funny, you know, I was, I, but I spoke to many authors and speakers, of course, about him. We're emailing, talking, saying how it's so sad to lose him. And then, you know, there was one, I was at a conference and there was one speaker who said, you know, he said, it's sad. He goes, yeah, it's sad. He said, you know, but another generation has to step in. Yeah. He goes, you know, he said, you know, and, and it's, I say that because I can remember when I started going to conferences and people say, Hey, yeah, I got into the Nephilim from LA Marzulli yeah. or I got into the Nephilim from Gary Stearman. And that's what led me into this. I started researching all this stuff in UFOs and aliens. And the last conference I was at, which is in Norman, Oklahoma with prophecy watchers, there were so many people who said they got into the Nephilim because of blurry creatures. Yeah. And so it's it's like almost like I see the baton being passed, even how we're connecting other people who are all new to this content. So that's that's definitely a testament to the success you guys had and how much God has blessed you. So Thanks, so hats off to you. And I'm glad you guys like the shirt, by the way. So this shirt is the uh, my wonderful wife Erica designed this shirt, and it is completely uh, blurry inspired. She said you know, she's been she was saying, she's saying to me like you know we got to get more shirts because she loves all your content all your merch she said i want to i want you to get a new shirt and so she had this idea and she goes what do you think and i said i love it and it says of course it's on it for those yeah. who are listening on the podcast is asking about the nephilim on it and then on the back i got the qr code here there you so are you scan <laughs> that it takes you right to a two minute video a very basic primer on the nephilim given by me and so you know it's a good conversation starter and a way to Love that. Get get a uh, get a little blurry on the road. It's hard. To, it's hard to get through town now because everyone's asking you about the Nephilim. I, I, I actually debuted at the Prophecy Watchers Conference in Norman, I, and I had to go to Target to pick up some uh, equipment for the computer. And people were stopping me left and right and scanning, scanning my back. <laughs> hey Ryan, is it is it weird people ask you to turn around and take a photo? You're like, man, yeah. <laughs> it's my my best time. Give me, give me skipping squat. Give me leg day in those squats, right? <laughs> <laughs> And if you take like three hours to go to the grocery store, you have an excuse. No question. Now, right? No question. You know? I mean, it only took me twenty minutes, but everyone kept asking me about the Nephilim, honey. I don't but know. But also, what I, I've actually already gotten lots of good um, DMs from people who have the shirt and said, "Hey, I, it works." I, I got to speak to people, and it's it's a great way to share it. So it's been That's fun. Awesome. My my goal is by next year for someone to tell me they, they got married from the shirt. They're like, you hey. know, I was walking and someone stopped me. We got into a conversation. She was a Christian. I'm a Christian, and here we go. So. But that was really, you Let's guys go. were a big role in that. So I will absolutely hook you guys up. There's hope though. There, there's hope for that. Uh, we actually had our first, our blurry wedding this year. So two folks. That, oh, there you go. See, there you go. That's the blurry. <laughs> so you know what? You're on the right path, man. Nothing like the Nephilim, nothing, nothing like the ne- <laughs> Nephilim to inspire some nuptials, right? <laughs> exactly. I love it. Exactly. So yeah. So 
Now we're talking about cattle mutilation. Yeah, yes, let's go from love and marriage to right to cattle mutilation. Seamless transition. That's how, the song, that's, 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 but, uh, that's how Sinatra yeah. did that song too, right? I mean, it's exactly how it went. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Love and marriage. They go to get like so, a horse and carriage. It's a, that, that horse just happened to be mutilated. Well, yeah, okay, <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I see. I see where you're going. With I that. was with you, Luke. Thank I you, Ryan. I knew where see, you were going thank you, Ryan. <laughs> I thought Nate would get that of all people's music guy. Yeah. But all right, Ryan, let's go. Drop it. Drop it on us here. Yeah. So, so cattle mutilations, right? So, so for me, obviously, you know, when we look, this is a phenomenon. It's been around, you know, really going back to the 1800s. And I've already, and I've found some articles and in, in journal entries, like in different, I mean, journals in like uh, academic journal entries. You, you know, in Ireland and in England, talking about this phenomenon and attributing it to some supernatural cause. And so, for me. You know, I'm always trying to see how does this link to the spirit realm and into scripture. And I think there are two things that we underestimate the impact of that are in the Bible and also in our society today in terms of what of the spiritual power behind them. And those two things I think are music and blood. Mm. Right. I think they, that what we're going to eventually find out in eternity that there's a great spiritual power behind music. And certainly the Bible tells us over and over about blood and that, the, you know, of course, in Leviticus 17, God says the life is in the blood. And I think when we think about the cat mutilations and what's happening here, where you see you already mentioned the precision, you know, I've looked, you know, we just had a, a, a case in Texas earlier this year in Madison County where six cattle were mutilated. And like you said, these are just farmers. It's a farming couple. And you, and I, you know, they actually showed the photos of the, where the reproductive organs are removed from the cow and the blood is being drained from it. And the, the whole, I mean, they said, and this is the, the, the farmer's own words. It says, it says, it looks like the cattle was cut with a laser. Mm. And it just turned out that the husband in this couple was actually, in addition to being a farmer, is actually an animal surgeon. So this is someone who is very familiar with cutting open animals, dissecting animals in a proper way. So what's happening here? And so that's so what kind of piqued my interest is this whole idea of, right, we see, of course, you know, once we hit the Mosaic law, that the importance of blood and blood sacrifice, specifically blood being drained, right? God doesn't just say, okay, just, you know, there's very specific instructions on how you, an animal, a, rich, a, a sacrificial animal was to be cut and then have its blood drained to be offered to God. And so, the, and so is there a power there? I think, yes. And even the idea that it has to be animals, right? Even I think even what the angelic realm, the fallen angelic realm is doing is that, right? Animals were used until Christ, until the ultimate right. sacrifice. So I think so God has set up this principle that their blood can be used um, as it was used for thousands of years in the Old Testament. And so I think that's the angelic realm is drawing on some power by these mutilations. And again, you can go to Texas, like, again, there was, uh, you mentioned Colorado, where there was a major investigation in the 70s. And um, one article I found, a clipping from 1977, was from a, a, a local government commissioned investigation in Colorado. And the article actually, you know, where they had dozens of cows, cattle mutilated in this fashion. Sometimes the tongues are removed, the yeah. eyes are removed, always the reproductive organs um, and blood draining. And even in their report, they were uh, referencing the Bible mm. and saying this is connected to Bible prophecy. So I, so I think that's where that there is some type of untapped power that when blood is being used and then you tie it in, of course, you know, um, to, you know, Genesis 6 in the days of Noah, the idea of manipulation, manipul reproductive organs and blood. I think that's kind of what got me um, really kind of excited to look into this even further here's a, here's a question for you like i know that you just have like a generic christian background you kind of think some of the explanations growing up oh there had to be like some perfect animal to be a sacrifice and when you say music too i think about there's this deeper meaning to it because what luke and i have kind of stumbled into is they knew things about harmonics and resonation and Frequency. sort of what is it frequencies yeah it's not just oh music gets you moving gets you going it can be seductive and is it just it's not just like blood is we, we just need a sacrifice because that's just how the ancients did it it seems as there's something even deeper here when it comes to frequencies and music and when it comes to blood and the life 
And what do you think that is? Is this like some sort of spiritual law in heaven where blood is like their understanding of it is different than ours? Maybe yeah, definitely. Perhaps. Right. And so I think that, you know, even when God says, you know, to Moses that the blood will be a covering of your sin, right? It's covering your immorality. That's a spiritual concept, right? So I do think exactly what you said that there are laws and principles in heaven regarding blood, just like music, right? And I think there's something to that with vibrations and frequencies. And and I and I think, you know, going back to episode 18, right, with Judgment of the Nephilim, where I talk about the first family of the Nephilim, I believe that the, even the, the creation of instruments, which came to Lamech's family in Genesis 4, you know, Jubal, his son, I think that came from the fallen angels. I think that was given from the sons of God, the knowledge of creating instruments and in, that to begin with. And then like you, you go to King David when he was, before he was king, when he was a boy, but was assigned to, to now live with Saul and is a part of his kingdom. And Saul was possessed by a spirit and David played music to remove a spirit. I mean, that to me is the Bible is clearly telling us there is a supernatural power and property mm-hmm. To musical vibrations and frequencies. You know, a spirit left him, left Saul when David played music. So there's something much deeper going on there. I think the same thing applies to the blood. And that's why we see this consistent connection of cattle mutilation, the draining of blood, UFO, alien phenomenon. I think it's all tied back to God's original principle that there's a power. Because if you think about it too, and it's funny too that you mentioned earlier the tractor beam, right? The idea that this, uh, you know, lifting things up. And yeah. So, you know, there's an interesting passage in Judges 13, right? Judges 13 is all about Samson. When the angel comes and tells his parents, you're going to have a son, he's a baby, he's going to have special powers, don't cut his hair, don't let him touch something dead, don't let him drink wine, he gives them all these Nazarite vows to take. First, he appears, the angel appears to his, to his mother, and she tells the hus- her husband, and he doesn't believe her. And then it shows up again, and they make a sacrifice. But the interesting thing, it's the only time in the Bible where it says the flame came from the altar and went up to heaven. Like normally you see a sacrifice when the, when the temple is being inaugurated by Solomon, the flame, God will send a flame down to consume a sacrifice. This went up to heaven huh. uh, from the, for the blood sacrifice. And it says the angel went up to heaven in the flame, almost like a tractor beam. Wow. Like he said, it literally says it went up in the flame. So, so again, I think that that was... I believe the use of the blood caused this supernatural, what I would call an opening, right? Of It pierced the veil, right? The blood allowed the veil between the human realm and the spirit realm to be pierced right in front of their eyes. And then, of course, what happens? Manoah, Sam's dad says, oh, yeah, now I definitely believe. Yeah, he said, yeah, de- this is, he, he's definitely, this is all going to happen, right? Because God, there was a divine manifestation right before their eyes once they put that blood on the altar. Ryan, uh, Ryan I want to point out too something that I, that I was thinking is that for us as Christians, right? Christ is that is that final sacrifice, the lamb that was slain, right? But for Jews that still practice, there's this coming time when they when they believe the temple will be rebuilt and they will resume sacrifices. So it this this thing hasn't stopped and i want also the occult as we know is super super focused on on blood whether it be things like jim caviezel talking about adrenochrome and the harvesting of uh, of that you know which is of course labeled as conspiracy theory by everyone out there but there seems to be way too much of that going on and then also we know that that practices in witchcraft especially are involve animal sacrifice and the letting of blood this so while this may have stopped with for for the followers of Christ when Christ was the ultimate and final sacrifice, the principle of this has not right. Like the there are many practices that still believe in in the power of, of spilling, letting, um, consuming what, whatever it be blood in order to for the Jews to see atonement of sins in the same way that we see in, in the mosaic in the mosaic law, and for the occult it's to it's part ritual right for you know to access. And we know that also having spoken to enough people that came out of the occult, like Nate and some of our interviews with these ex-witches, that the blood sacrifices are actually the ones where you level up in power. That's where you actually are able to, yeah, I don't know how to do do more. If you stack yeah, them. No, de- yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. The black mass right, often involves a blood sacrifice, a blood ritual. You can, again, going back to Leviticus, right? Blood's mentioned a ton in Leviticus, but there's one pastor where God specifically says, ye drink blood and ye worship idols. So God mm. connects that consuming of blood to 
again, worshiping the fallen angels, worshiping demonic spirits. So in the cult side, it's definitely still a big part of witchcraft, of Wicca, of the occult, whether it's a Lester Crowley or all these rituals where blood is integral. Because again, um, sadly, a lot of times the occult side of the, of, of society is more, more uh, in tune with what's really happening in the spirit realm. And, they, they, and they're doing these things and using the blood of animals and unfortunately sometimes the blood of humans because they're trying to, again, unlock. It has, I believe it has a property that is unlocking, allowing access into the spirit realm. Hmm. Do you think that they are drinking the cattle's and eating parts of it, like because I mean we've heard this the humans do this, right? I mean there's all these conspiracy theories floating around in the air. They're they're taking blood, they're taking parts of humans, and they're they're almost turning them into like drugs exactly. and consuming these things. Like extra tr- extraterrestrial beings well, are doing I mean, the same thing. Kind of assuming you know? this is. I mean, do we jump ahead a little bit, Ryan? As far as Nate assuming that these are, <laughs> this is extraterrestrial activity, because I, I I mean, I think we're, we're I mean where we are, right? I think. We've been on a case for the last, like, I don't know, 60, 70 episodes to say, look, I mean, these are not like, like crop circles are real. Something is making them. It's not, it's not a hoax. They're not, not all of them are hoaxed. And there's something's flying these craft around. I think it's safe to assume that we, as, you know, there are government hoaxes and there are deceptions. But what it, there's absolutely a phenomenon that's happening here and all these things are associated with it. So I would, I just, that's where my mind goes right away. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just, like, I don't know if we're jumping ahead on, on Ryan's research. Yeah. We went back to the 1800s and we started talking about, yeah. you know, a, a, as, it would, as it would be a surgeon, you know, an animal surgeon that, that ends up having this on his ranch, right? And so as you dove into all this research and sort of started pulling these threads and following these trails, Ryan, what are you finding? Like, what sort of you know, similarities and what, what sort of, what, what conclusions do you start drawing? I, I know that I, I like where you started because it's like, this is not new. And, and I think we, Nate and I did this a number of times in UFO stuff, right? This isn't just a, people will say, this is a new, the space thing is a new, it's from like the, it's from since Roswell. And you go, you know, not really, actually the Vatican library, according to a guest of ours, Dr. Diana Pasolka, who had access for her book, uh, American Cosmic said, there's a, an entire section in the Vatican that tr- chronicles UFO or inter- extraterrestrial or these anomalies for the last thousand years. Right. And, you know, we, and Nate, you also often reference, and we've done an episode on what happened in Nuremberg. So, what I like to, what I like what you're doing is we're dispelling this as some sort of, you know, modern myth, mythos or Deception. modern phenomena, right? When in reality, you know, we can look at our, our sort of modern microfiche, if you want, if you go back, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, can, yeah. you can find it in the 1800s. And, yeah, and then you go, well, you know, how long, how, how long has this been happening? And yeah, so I, I want to let, let you answer that, but, you know, start pulling, pull some of these threads for us and, and some of the trails you end, up, you end up going down as you, on what's been happening. Yeah, I would say in the earlier times, the consistent theme was it was either attributed to kind of what I would call like a mythical creature or they attributed it to the devil. That's really the common kind of culprit in these things. And so one example on the first side would be like Chupacabra. Right. I've heard right. That. Which mm-hmm. yeah, right. Which means goat sucker, right? Which is known for its taking the blood of animals, right? And so that's that's so some so again, some societies, cultures go out that route and attribute that there's a creature that's doing this. And then we go more, I guess, into Europe. In the 19th century, they're connecting this to the, the essentially the fallen angelic realm. They're going right to Satan and saying this. That's what they're ascribing it to. And I would just say all the above, right? I mean, because you know, even again with creatures, and I kind of and I kind of spoke about this um, at the last conference I was at. Said so you have to understand that you know a spirit realm being can inhabit an animal. Right. We see that in mm-hmm. the gospels, right? We see demons go into pigs. So the idea that a creature could actually be possessed by a demon or a fallen angel, but there's a precedent for that in the Bible. So if you see a creature acting in some, and if you look at people who are possessed in the Bible, like the, de- the demoniac at the Garden of Reins, who's he, they chain the guy and he's breaking the chain. He is supernaturally strong. There's another account in Acts where a guy uh, fights seven, seven men and, and they run out of the house naked. So, could an animal take on supernatural strength when under a demonic or angelic influence? I think absolutely, right? So I think so. I, that's why I say I say all of the above because I think ultimately they're probably all right in some way. There could be a creature is actually doing this or an angelic being appearing, however they're appearing, com- 
you know, committing these kind of acts. It, w- it would seem though, like if it was a creature, right? And I think this is what gets so tough with this is that oftentimes, and I don't know, you'd be more of an expert having looked into this, but oftentimes you, what you hear about, as you said, is that it's what the original sort of original ground zero first one, talk, you know, first doctor talks about it being surgical in nature, almost laser cut. And when we look into some, we, we, you get these things and they come across sort of the, 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 uh, the wire here. I think every once in a while you see, these, I think there's one in Texas that you referenced earlier that I remember looking at. There was a, a mass, a pretty mass one, like where a ton of cattle were mutilated and they were like, they were talking just about how no blood precision, like surgical, you know, almost caught her and cauterized. That's that's kind of why I went there because every time we look at what humans do, like a cheap version of it, like for instance, megalith building, there's the there's the our construction, and then there's this archaic ancient construction that's just so much better. There's you know obviously humans can do crop circles, we can make them, and then there's the ones that they do, right? It's they're just not they're night and day, and the crops actually can come back when they're. But when humans, we destroy things, we break things, we we cut things open, and you can see there's a human involved there. And then you can see this advanced technology that they possess in all these different rabbit holes that we go down. So that's kind of why I jumped yeah. there is because you can, you can, some of it is hoaxing, some no of it is you. government, whatever, but not all no. of it. And that is, that's where we're at a lot in the show is like. What you like is to, this? You like to skip and read the last page of the book, Nate. I know how you know how. You <laughs> yeah. I do. I do. And I like and I love tying it to the megalithic structure, structures because it's exactly the same, right? When you talk about the precision of taking these, you know, multi megaton stones and cutting them at perfect angles, or perfect, it's the same exact probably technology, right? So I think that's a direct link to it. And if you want to go way way back uh, in terms of this concept. The 80s? <laughs> yeah. the 80s? A little earlier than the 80s. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about technology of the 80s. I thought they were going to get into like an NES no, we're talking rant about right there. Yeah, no, set no, tapes. No. Yeah, Walkman, yeah, baby. Yeah, right. <laughs> let, my, let my tape rock till my tape pops. Um, <laughs> so you look again to ancient, ancient Hebrew, like second temple period, first century, second century Israel, um, and he, ancient Hebrew culture, right? They had this whole concept of Lilith or Lalith Mm -hmm. as this, you know, which who's actually referenced in the Bible, right? This idea of this, you know, in the Bible, in the KJV, they call it a screech owl or a night creature in other versions, but the actual direct translation to Hebrew is Lalith and and the whole concept. And of course, there's now this, the, the, the modern understanding of Lilith is the, you know, that she was the original wife of Adam who was then rebelled and left and uh, event- eventually was kind of a, fa- a mother of Nephilim actually. So, but in ancient Hebrew belief, they were, they believed that this was a demon that would come and consume blood and take blood, especially from children to the point that women would actually, and they've found these um, amulets that women would wear to protect them from the leaf. So they would, so their children would not lose blood and um, even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, in a list of there's a some some documents have lists of monsters. And Lilith is listed there as well, and it's referenced I think in uh, Isaiah chapter 34. So we're in in, mm-hmm. in a reference to a judgment where it says the satyrs will dance and the judgment of Edom, a desolate place where you will find these creatures. It says and Lilith will be there. Well, so especially with the, going way back, yeah, and actually, you know, if you've seen the, I don't know, people some people don't like this and some people do, but if you've watched the Chosen at all, they actually reference. You know, Lilith, Lilith, with and with 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 Mary Magdalene. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, interesting. I interesting. think it's interesting how some of those things get pulled in. And people don't like. I haven't uh, made it that far. Some people don't like like that, but like that show. But I, I think it personally, I I find it fascinating. It's just an idea that just yeah, just to, yeah. put a story around the story. And anyway, interesting. Yeah, Lilith is having a pop culture resurgence. So I, I you know, I, I my other talk at. At the Prophecy Watch was, was on all the pop culture references to Genesis six and, and shows and movies and all those things. And uh, it's my latest documentary, and I have a whole section about Lilith because there are so many shows that mention Lilith. I didn't know the Chosen though, so that's good to know. But comics, I think it was uh, Supernatural has a Lilith, a Lilith character. The Sabrina, the 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 Netflix Sabrina the Teenage Witch show has a Lilith on it. The show Lucifer on wow. Netflix. There's also a show about uh, a young woman who receives a heart transplant 
from a couple whose daughter died in a car accident and she starts seeing what things the daughter saw. And it's, you think it's going to be one of those kind of paranormal shows where right, she's going to, she's going to see memories that this other young woman had and she's living it through her heart. But what it turns out in the end <laughs> is that the parents actually belong to a cult and they were preparing their daughter to be possessed by Lilith in this ritual. And so now they're doing it with the woman who received the transplant. So, wow. Um, Nothing's new under the sun, right? They just they, exactly. They re- <laughs> exactly. The old, the old, the old stories. They, they go down the old, the old well, roads. It's wild. So uh, if we, if we assume that like, you know, and this is one of the arguments we've made, we make a lot when people, a lot of people on our channels get mad at us when we talk about specifics, right? We're always going for the data. All right. So when David Politis came on and said, look, UFOs are not only out in the middle of nowhere, but they're taking elk with them. Right. And there is something about elk hunters going dis- disappearing as well with in these UFOs. And his whole thing is like, look, here's all the data. Here's all the science. These these people are just up and vanishing. They're going from our realm to somewhere else. And I think a lot of Christians, it disrupts their sort of their core. It kind of they don't know how to make sense of these things. But where we are on the show, it's like, clearly it's not animals. It's not humans. It's, it's something is taking uh, these people and someone is taking these animals. Why are they taking animals, you think? Are they trying to create hybrids again? Are they, are they trying to mess with our food supply? What are they doing, you think? Yeah, I, I lean much more towards the hybrid hybridization program, right? That took place in the days of Noah, right? And, and, you know, and I certainly believe that in Genesis 6, when it talks that when God says all flesh, the beast, the animals, that they were mingling DNA, genetic, they were doing genetic experimentation on animals, right? And I think that, again, going back to Isaiah 34, where it mentions Lilith in that verse, it mentions the Seder, right? Which is a hybrid being, a half animal, half human being. And so I think that's what was taking place. So, so the two sort of benefits of abducting an animal are you one, you have the blood and whatever they know they can do to, again, leverage the supernatural properties of it. But you also have the reproductive organs, which again, I believe that they, they, they are trying to bring back, right? Bring back the days of Noah to remove the veil altogether, to bring back the days when the angels were the gods and they were producing their own hybrid kingdom. And so, you know, and of course, this is going right back to scripture in Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah. We know without beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jesus said, it is going to, we're going to return to that era. So all these things to me are just the preparation and precursors to, to it actually taking place. We know a lot of the stuff is happening underground too. They're taking things down underground and they're messing around with it down there as well. Are they, do you think that there is some sort of law where they can't necessarily do it on the surface of the earth or something, but they, so they take it up into craft or whatever. And, and so they can get away with whatever they're doing, because it seems to be a hidden thing that's going on. It's not, it's not out in the open. Like it, may have been in the days of Noah. I mean, I don't know what kind of labs they had back then or <laughs> how they were making their chimeras, but it seems as though Probably it's, the it's, it's behind the scenes. Way, They're just doing it the old, just, the old fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about that too much. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, what does that mean? I, I, what does I, that even we'll mean? Leave it there. We'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I think that's an interesting question too. And I think it's something we ponder, right? The idea that, you know, we know that God, when He was sent the flood in order to to cleanse the earth, it was He He made a promise uh, that He would never destroy the earth by water again. And we also know that, that, like you know, as we talked about in our first couple episodes with you, Ryan, that that the manner by which the you know the giants returned, we know they did return. We have you know Goliath and his four brothers. There are giants in 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 the land that Joshua and the conquest of Joshua requires them to vanquish per 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 Yahweh and the dictate of you know him using Israel as his judgment as his instrument of judgment. And we know they they were there again. It doesn't really tell us again how it happened. It wasn't just it wasn't explicit as as much as it was in Gen six when we heard, when the the watchers took wives. And so I, I think that's an interesting idea, right? And something we've kicked around is is are they you know, sort of doing this off of off the ground or yeah, per personal legality. I know that you, you have quite a, uh, you have a background in, 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 in doing, in, in some law stuff. And, and, and we know that we also know that the, that the, 
supernatural spiritual realm, whatever you, whatever vernacular you want to use for that, operates very legally. You know, we talked about Dr. Michael Heiser in the um, in our pre roll, and one of the things fascinating, you know, fascinating things that he brought to light, and he was the first first person to say that he didn't have any original ideas. He that he just compiled. He was a researcher who compiled information, but you know, his his big aha was Psalm eighty two and this idea of a divine counsel. And then we look at things like Job and these different these different settings, which are definitely courtroom esque, right? And so one of the things we we sort of unpacked and, and uncovered in the show is this the legality. And we talked to exorcists too, and they know this very well that there is very much a legality to this. And so isn't there's interesting ideas around you know why things happen and if it's about legalities, perhaps. But yeah, I'm curious on your thoughts on, on that. And then a follow up to that, Ryan is. is it, my question is, what, why, why do you think cattle, of all things? Like, there's a lot of, you know, maybe there are a lot of things, other things disappearing, and maybe it's just because they're such large animals, and there's so many of them. We tend to, we tend to, that be, tends to be sort of the optics. But anyway, that's a twofold question. That's a lot. Yeah, no, no worries. It's all good. These are great questions. So the the legality part of it, yes. Yeah. So so much of, you know, when you think about even basic concepts that every Christian can agree on, right? That of, of like the redemption. That Christ served as a ransom. That he's he's a substitutionary atonement. He's paying you know all these ideas. He's paying our debt. Right. These are all legal concepts. So I I agree. I think that in the supernatural realm, the angels are under very strict regulation. And when they can actually reveal, engage, come into our realm and do things, it's all regulated by God. You already gave the example of Job, where obviously. Uh, Satan was limited in what he could do at first. And then God gave him a little bit more leeway to actually per- directly harm Job's body, but not kill him. Right. So I think all that is very regulated and that's why they can't reveal themselves. Right. Even Jesus, when he spoke to demons said, don't tell anyone who I am. Right. He was even yeah. regulating them on earth. And they're like, you're the Christ. You, you are the son of God. I know exactly who you are. He says, don't yeah. tell anyone. And so what they can are permitted to reveal to our eyes and to our realm, um, I think is very regulated. And I think that's why these things are being done off planet, right? <laughs> you know, or yeah. on, on, on board a ship or vessel because it's, it, it is God's regulation and legality. And that's always what, it, that's, that's always what people describe. It's like they go up in some sort of medical, you know, like room and they're being experiment on sometimes they see multiple people up there sometimes pregnancies go missing i mean it's very much like a science a science lab in the sky or whatever except, they except it's not mcdreamy it's it's uh somebody else somebody <laughs> exactly. else is operating you know, definitely not mcdreamy <laughs> or mcdreamy <laughs> <laughs> and here's something else I, to, I, I think might tie into this is that this face peeler phenomenon that's going on. These mm-hmm. faces are being taken off of people in per- places like Peru. Yeah. And it seems like it's around the glands. It's around the neck, the face. You know, I think, you know, we, we know that the Nephilim were eating human beings. Exactly. And we know, we know that they drink the blood to stay young in a lot of these places. And they put certain things to stay young. And they use, they use humans. Uh, you know, we're, it's like the matrix humans are the, or the, we're farmed almost. And they, that's why they are so obsessed with children and young blood, little kids and this and that. They, they use them in every way they possibly can. They're they're It's disgusting, but, but we know it's true. And so I think part of me thinks like Ryan, what we've learned is the kingdom of heaven echoes the kingdom of earth. So some of the things that we get involved in here, we get it from somewhere else. So exactly. if they're messing if they're messing with humans the same way that we're messing with humans, it's like everyone's doing the same thing. It's just theirs is a, is a much more advanced project or prototype of what we do. Exactly. And God knows this, right? Because again, you go back to Genesis 9, right? You no, know, it gets off the ark. And the first prohibition is do not drink blood, right? That's the first thing God really? tells no one not to do. Yeah, do not drink blood. Because the life is therein. So, so isn't that interesting? Because yeah. he's just coming out of being around how many millions of Nephilim giants who are drinking blood, right? So I think, yeah, they, they of course, they have higher science. They have higher mathematics, higher, you know, architecture, all those things, right? We're just, we're, you know, it's almost like if you think about it, you know, it's like the fourth, dim- the fourth dimension, right? Each lower dimension is, it, like you said, you said it echoes. I see it as like a shadow, right? Like our shadow is just a two-dimensional version of ourselves. And I believe that we in the realm now, we are the shadow of 
the, the supernatural realm, yeah. right? We're because they're one extra dimension beyond us. So we're just doing a lower level of those things, right? And so, and of course, God told Moses that, right? He's, he's, everything we see, the tabernacle and the temple, of course, says are, you know, they are based on what he saw in heaven, right? And so, so yeah, so I think when we look at what they're trying to do on that order in terms of like this surgery with precision in the sky, taking reproductive organs during abduction phenomena, all those things, it's a, it's a higher level of CRISPR, yeah. of all the things that we see in uh, transhumanism and the life extension movement to, to genetically ma- manipulate to make a superhuman or make an immoral human. And of course, ties in again with prophecy, you know, in Daniel 2 and says, they shall mingle themselves in the final kingdom, says they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So we know again that I believe there's, this is all in anticipation when God says, now you're permitted to do it. Because God is going to permit this thing to happen. He is going to permit it. He is going to say, now you can appear before them. You can now openly appear, right? The, the days of Noah were these beings, the gods on earth walking around, marrying women, fighting, destroying people, consuming blood. And so that's going to, it's going to happen again in the great tribulation. This is just their preparation and trying to get as close as possible to that until the point that God says, now you're permitted to do it. And they go just like we see when Satan goes and causes wreaks havoc in Job's life. The minute God says you can do it. Hmm. What do you, what do you, when it says the life is in the blood, like what do you think really is in the blood? We, we interviewed one, our friend Trent who, who uh, had some wild stories, who who's kind of was contracted by the government to go down into the dumbs and communicate with some of these extraterrestrial beings. And one of them said to him, blood is congealed light. You remember that, yeah, Luke? Do. You said a lot of crazy things. Said, but that was blood is... You said, yeah. wow. I, I didn't know what to make of that. Like, congealed light. What does that even mean? You know, like, is there something in our blood that it, that that is beyond just the typical scientific explanation of plasma and red cells and like is there something some sort of spiritual force in human blood i guess yeah i I think it's the breath of life right i mean god formed adam he made his body and he breathed into him and then he said he became a living soul and and our blood carries the breath right carries oxygen so i think that that is the supernatural property right it's passed down to every person has the breath of life in them and that is what is accessing and penetrating the veil into the supernatural realm. I believe it's the, that God has, we all carry that breath of life in us. And I think it's in the blood. And so when God says the life is in the blood, it's because he breathed that life into our original father. Do you believe that our blood changed maybe perhaps at the fall in the, in the garden? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. We, and, and, you know, so we have a, we have a, just like our image, right? Where the image is corrupted or, we were, we were, we, we became corrupted in, in the sin, in the fall, but we still have, I believe that breath, Job references that right in, in, in the book of Job, he references it just like it says that Seth, Adam's son was made in his own image. So it's a lesser sinful image, right? But we inherit it, right? And, and if you think about it too, again, so much in this, in scripture goes back to genetics. I mean, the Bible is basically a book of a genetic trail right? The Old Testament Mm -hmm. is just a genetic trail from Adam to Jesus, Mm -hmm. to Messiah. So, and and I talk about even the idea that the sin nature, right, is itself is inherited, right? And this, you know, the fact it says, in Adam all die, like, how is that possible? How is it possible that we die because of Adam? Because we've literally, in our body, in our genetics, in our blood, we have inherited a nature, a spiritual nature from him. Right. And so, yeah. so I think that's how it crosses over. That's how blood crosses over, that it has a spiritual potential. And if you think about it, right, it's, it takes the perfect blood of Christ to save our spirit. Right. Again, it's like, why is the blood so important, the blood of Christ? Because there's a supernatural power and in his blood, because it's un, obviously untainted by sin. And so that's what restores us back to eternal life. So, I mean, the idea too, that you think, right, that, and this just, this just came into, my, came into my mind. I should have said this in Norman, but it just came to my mind now. If you think about the idea that one, that the, literally that the shedding the blood of Jesus gives you immortality, mm-hmm. right? That's a powerful concept. So, you know, to think that that's, mm-hmm. there's that much power in blood, if the angelic realm has any inkling of that knowledge, why would they, 
why wouldn't you be trying to do whatever you can to unlock yeah. whatever power you can from whether it's a human's blood and a cow's blood and you know whatever it might be so um and as far as cattle why cattle i didn't finish yeah, your second thank question you, Ryan. look at you're a pro you're a pro's <laughs> pro you're I'm a pro's pro here. Yeah. <laughs> um I did really like try to get into that because, you know, in, the, in Leviticus, they mention all sorts of animals, right? There's pigeons, turtle doves, lamb, there is cattle. Um, the only thing I could really um, find outside the fact that cows have a lot of blood, they also interestingly have um, the intestines, they say, of cows can have like more food than the average animal, like the average large animal. They have tons of food in their intestines because obviously they have multiple stomachs. And so, I just bring that up because when you talk about the fact that the bodies of these mutilated cows and cattle um, aren't mauled, they said like they are like prime targets for any scavenger animals because right. they have so much food inside their intestines. Yet, they're, yet, yet when we see these cattle mutilations, they're, usually their stomachs are completely untouched. They're not bitten. They're not gnawed open. Some animal hasn't bored their way in there. It's it's just this the reproductive organs and the tongue and other and their eyes and other parts. So, but what the only thing I could find was um, there is a warning to Israel. God says that He will send uh, evil beasts against their cattle. That's actually a a judgment that God promised Israel would happen if they were in sin. That was the only thing I could really find that specified cattle as being a target of these evil, I'm sorry, wild beasts, wild beasts. And so, and again, wild beasts, when you go back to Isaiah 34, are used in the same passage that talks about Lilith, that talks about satyrs, it also mentions wild beasts. So I kind of said, is there some connection here between God saying, I'm going to send not, not wild animals, but beasts as in like the supernatural beasts to come and judge your, to to come destroy your cattle as as a as a divine judgment. Ryan, I was I was I was looking up when we were talking about and just because I was thinking maybe it just has to do with saturation, right? Or the or the number of cattle. Ninety two point one million cattle in the United States. We're just about thirty million are beef cattle. So we got we got a lot of a lot of steaks out there uh, sitting around. What but what I think is fascinating, and I wanted to ask you about this, was this is something that in skin in the Skinwalker Ranch show, right? This is uh episode, season one, episode seven. This, this cow ends up dying. And and I wonder how prevalent this is, but I've heard this not this is not an isolated incident where these things are killed and then and then they aren't fed on by scavengers. They aren't touched. They won't they the the normal things, the flies, the insects, the bigger, the bigger scavengers, so the vultures, the you know, the ravens, the crows, and even things like, you know, coyotes and and the animals sort of the, as you go down sort of the hierarchy or up the hierarchy is the way I'm going right now. They don't touch it. So something very bizarre happens to you know, a lot of these, or at least a few, a lot, I don't, you know, I suppose I was going to ask you these mutilations where the animal kingdom, as it would, knows something, they don't touch it. It's something very, very odd and strange has happened to mutilated, killed animals. They, they even say that some of these like areas where the UFO touched down, nothing will grow there either. There's yeah. something strange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, exactly. And too, and if you think too, right, there's this idea of going back to Nate, what you were saying about, you know, the, the rules in heaven echoing here, right? You have, again, like with Samson, we mentioned Samson earlier, so that he should not touch anything that's dead, mm, right? Yeah. So could that be a lower level of, if there's something that's going through a ritual death that in the supernatural realm, they know don't touch it again once it's, you know, organs have been removed. I don't know, but it seems like potential for that, that there's something in that ritual um surgery and organ removal and blood draining that it's so strong that the animal kingdom knows that's what i was saying because a cow has so much potential food for a scavenger right in intestines yet they don't go anywhere near it so there's a lot of good there's a lot of good beef there too you know if you're gonna absolutely and, <laughs> i think the other thing i was curious because you know we talked about both your books and in uh the final nephilim we you get in you to a lot of biblical prophecy and 
you know, what, what's to come, right? We, we talk about the golden age, what happened then and up to the flood, and then sort of looking forward as well, right? The, the things that were then never really stopped, they just sort of changed. It's like they got new marketing, right? And, and sort of play by new rules in some way or different rules, if you will. You know, being really a student of eschatology and ancient Hebrew and the scripture, when you tie these together with this sort of phenomenon, something's going on, and, and as we tie it to the UFO phenomena and, and the angelic realm, and, and I think we're implying, and, and that's where Nate and I are as well, that a lot of what we believe that a lot of this, the UAP UFO phenomenon has to do with the angelic race or the whatever, whatever sort of vernacular you want to use around that, fallen angels and, and the other perhaps other supernatural, maybe not spiritual, because there's a lot of physicality with supernatural beings that exist in in, in that realm, in, in operating in our realm, right? But it's kind of from an eschatology standpoint, what what is your what are your thoughts? Can, do you think there is a tie to some of the things? And what do you think they're doing with a lot of the harvesting of, of blood, body parts, DNA, et cetera? What do you think they're doing with a lot of this? And what do you think the end game is? Is this a Joel 2 army thing? Is this a what do you, what is your best? Yeah. So I connect this to a couple of things. So one, uh, I definitely think that again, we're going to see an attempt to bring the Nephilim back in the end times, right? I think once the angels are manifesting. So I think that's a lot of it is trying to, to manipulate in before, you know, in the meantime, trying to get that, to get that done. But the ultimate, you know, when we talk about this idea of, of the blood is, is, going to be, I think, with the Antichrist and with the mark of the beast. Because I, I do think the mark of the beast is beyond having an economic component, it's going to have a genetic component. And, you know, everything, I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's like straight out of, you know, science fiction, right? right? The Antichrist is holding himself up as the mirror image, the satanic mirror image of Christ, mm -hmm. right? We talked about the fact that the blood of Christ saves us. And I think that ultimately mm -hmm. what's going to happen is what's going to win the world over to the Antichrist is when he suffers a mortal wound and is healed. He's going to die and come back to life before everyone's eyes. They're going to see this. And that's what the, that's when we see in Revelation 13, 4, where it says, who is like the beast? Who can make war with him? That's when they're like, okay, this guy, this is it. He's God. He is the Messiah. No one can touch him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the point where you can say, okay, well, if you take on my blood, you can be like me. You can overcome mm -hmm. death like I can. And so the mm -hmm. ultimate end game is to get the blood of the Antichrist into humanity. And so doing the yeah. exact opposite, right? Christ is giving you blood for eternal life. The Antichrist is giving you blood for eternal damnation. And we see that in Revelation 14, where it says, if you take this mark, there is no turning back. There is no forgiveness, right? What would make God say something like that? Send an angel flying around the earth, announcing this vocally, visually. You can see this angels telling the whole earth, don't do this, don't do this. What? Why? Why that particular sin? Because I think it's actually going back to Genesis 6, where it's corrupting you. Again, putting that spirit from the blood into you, making you something other than human, something other than the image bearer of God, and therefore disqualified mm -hmm. from salvation. So I think that's that's the to me the ultimate end game of this whole blood genetic race <laughs> arms race we're in right now with the fallen realm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of people, whether your your views on Revelation are different. I mean, we have a we have a very a, a much bigger audience now with the, various views on these things but i think i think the reason i always sort of come back to your view is because we can see these themes repeating so many times and a lot of people just have this hopeful thing like everything's just going to get better one day and i'm like well i mean if you look at the data of what they're doing behind the scenes that's really hard for a lot of christians because they don't want to adopt more of a end times theology because they're i think it makes them feel like i don't have any hope i i'm sad this is depressing this already happened or whatever their their conclusion but i but i think luke and i are always trying to bang the drum of like look these weird phenomena are happening and they've been happening since the dawn of time so how it's going to play out who knows but the themes are probably going to be the same because we've seen like you said the genetic part of the deception over and over and over again and this cattle mutilation thing is crazy because just like we've heard people getting dumped out of craft you know let's say someone comes in and does play a hoax well how is this thing like falling out of the sky and almost embedded into the into the ground you know we've heard stories of people getting dumped out of these when people get this ryan who have had a vasectomy will get dumped out of ufos it's like 
someone already tampered with these yep. dudes, so they yep. just drop them out of the. <laughs> they're, they're no good. They're so, they're they're right, shooting yeah. blanks. Yeah, 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 he's got nothing for it. <laughs> Empty gun. And 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 David Politis. David Politis said on her show, "This is why shoes and clothing are folded nicely in the middle of nowhere. They don't want anything contaminating their ships." Yeah. They don't want clothes yeah. in there. Mm-hmm. They, they don't want shoes in there. They don't. So these th- these items that people are wearing are just kind of scattered around in random places. So we're trying to piece all these clues together and say not only is the spiritual realm a physical thing, it is. Yeah, it's. It, and I think a lot of Christians have this just different view of it. It's not a physical thing. It's all deceptions. And I think we're just going through the data and trying to piece it all together of like. Okay, it's more than it's more than a spiritual deception. That's we haven't sure. even mentioned the fact that you have numerous governments since you and I, the three of us, have last spoken, have now yeah. come out with their own disclosure. Right. So I mean, there's so yeah. many government. I mean, we're on. I mean, I, I wouldn't even say we're on the brink of disclosure. I mean, governments are. Just, you have government officials left and right are saying, "Yes, these beings are real. We have UFOs. Well, the, we have biological the Mexi- evidence." The Mexicans, the Mexicans so, have a mummy, a little mummy. Have you saw that thing? Right, exactly. That's wow, it's just I mean, who knows it's real. Every, Israel's government. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all over. It's every this. I mean, so yes. Yeah, so it's. I think what I'm trying to say is it. It's as intricate as if they're building iPhones in the sky. Obviously, humans build iPhones. They're building something even more advanced. But we're discovering this this sort of <laughs> factory where they're building things. It's that advanced. It's, or are doing experience w- light years beyond our understanding, and. It's 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 very specific experiments. It's not just tinkering around, taking an elk here or there. It's something really advanced is going on. You know. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I'm researching right now, because um, I'm look as I mentioned in the pre-roll, you know, I'm researching now the the original satanic rebellion before Adam and Eve, and I'm looking into this concept of man being made in the image of God. Let us make man in our image as in, and I'm taking that as in this time we're going to make this creation in our image. So I don't believe the angels were made in God's image. And so maybe even in that, and this just came to me. So um, I'll make sure I give yeah. you guys the, you know, a footnote in my, in my book <laughs> is, yeah. is that maybe part of the, the, the intense research into our DNA reproductions to see if they can get that put that property of being made in God's image into their own genetics or into a host body that has that feeling. Because I, I believe that's something that, that that that's what I believe separates us from the fact that angels are more powerful, they're older, obviously, um, than us. But I think that distinction that God made is another thing that separates from us from them, and maybe that's part of what they're trying to research and or harvest. Um, for themselves, maybe trying to backdoor salvation that way. Yeah, salvation or, or that spirit, that breath of God, right. Right? that breath of life, or that however what what God did that makes us in His image. So yeah, I mean, I think it's it's interesting. That's a really interesting point. I mean, I think because one of the things Nate that we, you know, we've talked about, you know, what Tim Alberino wrote his book about was the idea that you know we have a birthright as humans, as sons of Adam, right? They, they allow us to rule here, and part of what part of what was happening with Genesis six was that the, the, the progeny of the watchers, the sons of the watchers were human enough to rule, to sit on the throne. And they, and they, and they could by the legalities of, of the, of the law of the ways that God set up earth. Right. And so I, I wonder exactly. if that's also not, not yeah. a way, right. To yeah. essentially to pulse enough humanity that they, that they, you can, by right than rule because i'm one of the interesting things tim said and, and I, I it stuck with me was that when they talked about you know who said on the they talked about the you know the the throne of satan and, and that being the at the time it was the the throne of the emperor of, of rome right of, of, the, of the world right the, rome was a known world but satan did not sit on the throne the emperor did the, he was human right and there's a very interesting concept there about just, and, and I think it falls in the line we've t- talked about the way that that laws and precepts and legalities rule the heavenlies, and and honestly, that's what we have here is, is I like the way you put it as shadow, right? Like we, you know, the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom, and we have kingdoms here, and you know, and a lot of the things that we talk about in ancient ancient megaliths, we. We've talked about uh, heaven and there being walls and roads and these things that we hear about heaven and and that being in some ways you could even say a more advanced civilization, right? This this uh, 
it's it's way ahead of us and yet and we are sort of a shadow of that but we have laws and we have a lot of the same things that i believe that that god set set forth in heaven and i know that god gave a lot of laws to us because we you know we needed them we couldn't we couldn't we need to draw lines in the sand and we as humans couldn't get out of our own way and i understand that's part of it as well but i think it's fascinating in the same yeah. way to think that it tend to really thought about the way you put that though that perhaps they're trying to backdoor engineer hum- humanity yeah, really for good. the homaggio deo for the image and, exactly. and in in yeah. that becomes authority and also salvation right which is uh, these are two very whatever yeah. i whatever i and did I there I made, made a bubble i'm gonna do it again yeah <laughs> you open the portal yeah. And like, <laughs> um yeah no i i think tim is right i think he's totally right with the birthright concept which is which is an amazing concept i know and and um i think he hit the nail on the head and i think what i connected to again with the antichrist i think you know it's it, it in some ways at least for me personally it, it's really astounding to me that you satan goes through thousands literally thousands of years of history warring warring scheming plotting and when he gets to the penultimate episode right in his whole attempt to thwart god and he now we're in the great tribulation again he doesn't sit on the throne right he puts the antichrist on the throne he gives the antichrist his power the hybrid. and no and, 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 and says and great authority hybrid son he sees it all and i think that's why the antichrist has to be a nephilim he has to be part human for that reason because he has to have human genetics to legally have have a legal claim to, to sit on the throne oh, of the world exactly uh, dude yeah. let's go i love i do yeah. <laughs> i mean I, listen, I think i think though right i mean this is what and maybe it harkens back to what you talked about in the beginning and is that there's these things are such great pieces to understanding and unlo- unlocking the scriptures and even unlocking what's happening around us and in this case we're talking about cattle mutilations and connections to ufos and connections to you know to our faith and to eschatology and even to you know, ancient, ancient biblical history. And th- these things make things make sense. You, you go, why, why, you know, why not just Satan yeah. showing up? Why, why does he not just do X, Y, Z or why? And you go, wow, because God has set things in motion and he, and they are eternal and, and, and concrete and you, you can't, they're unchanging. Right. And so within that, you know, even the darkness is trying to, legally you know find its way to to sort of catch i, I don't know who, who was on the show it could have even been you navigate yeah it said that like the, the darkness doesn't think they can win they just they want to catch god on a technicality right and sort of exactly. sort of forever delay the inevitable and and yet we see that's what it is right it's uh, the watchers took wives to have sons because they they themselves couldn't you know couldn't rule they had to have rule by proxy and right so i think i think the cattle mutilation thing is fascinating because you know because i i don't i feel like the more that we talk about the more we things make sense but then you still are like i don't know i don't know i got like our other our other animals going going missing like i I know people are and some return right Uh, at at least we know uh, that's the other thing that's really wild to think about right yeah yeah well i was gonna say ryan one thought that i had when you were talking about job and what your your previous just rant there was um you know, I, a lot of times I think that human beings, if some of these entities are real, the fact that we are still able to live here pretty much untouched by these other realms for now is these laws, is these rules. Because if this stuff is exists, exists and it's just it, it comes and goes and does what it wants, yet it's, it really can't mess with us to a certain degree. There's some legality issue of why everyone isn't just you know, because a lot of these ancient alien types and these other groups who think all this stuff is real, I'm like, well, what's keeping them at bay? What exactly. laws are they observing? Because they are observing laws. Whose laws? Yeah. It, because it, why are we even still here if they can just do all these things? Exactly. It, and it, and it, it's it's all the laws and regulations. And you think about it too, part of it, I think God is holding a trial, right? Why is Satan even allowed to go to heaven? What, like what's going on with that? Why why is Satan allowed to actually still go to heaven and stand before God's throne and just speak to him and and bargain and negotiate? Because I think God is showing, I'm going to put my way on trial and the devil's way on trial. I'm going to prove my case to the angelic realm, right? Because the, the you know we we're told in the New Testament says that our salvation is something that angels look into. They want to know what's going on. So I believe God is demonstrating by using humanity 
to show, I'm going to show that my way in the end was always right. And I'm going to make this mm. whole new creation that doesn't have any of the advantages you have. They can't see me. They're not in heaven. They don't have the powers you have. They don't have the wisdom you have. And they're good. They, and with, despite all of that, they're still going to grope through the darkness and come find me and choose me. And so I think, yeah. so I think a lot of this goes back to what's ultimately happening and, and showing that no matter what, Satan will always just do evil and destroy things. So that's all that's holding it back is God's legality. Because all you have to do is look to the sixth trumpet, right? When you have this, I, I believe, angelic army. People, so many people think it's China or something of that nature. I think it's, it's a supernatural army. And it says it wipes out a third mm-hmm. of the population just in one sentence. Because that's, that's the damage, that's the power that these beings have. That's the damage they can inflict. So God's holding it all back. And that's, what, so th- that's why they haven't struck it, because God, it's all God's legality as he, as, he, as he works through this process to redeem us and prove his way, I believe, to the angelic realm. I love it. I love it. I think it's important because I think we are in a time when mass conformity is a very easy thing. And people need to understand that, you know, what the image that you were created in is something that, that, that they're always after. And we have to be mindful of our image and, and mindful of the way that God created us, especially with crazy psyops abound and more and more propaganda is being pumped down our throats about everything, taking a stand and saying, you know, this is, this isn't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in line all the time for all these agendas. And I think that obviously that can open up another can of worms. And you did tease talking about Samson, which I've been wanting to talk about for three years on this show. Like, <laughs> what is going on there? And you just got to drop those little nuggets and then like, let's keep going. Let's talk about something else. I'm like, dang, I want to talk about that. What's that? Luke wants to talk about Samson's hair so bad, Ryan. You don't even know. You know, it's uh, it's biblical that great lettuce with great lettuce comes great great strength. It's not a, it's not it's not a hard and fast law. We're talking about legalities, <laughs> but there is precedent. So, <laughs> I mean, what what was that hair like? I mean, I just it just it's interesting though that he couldn't touch a dead animal. I really yeah didn't yeah. think I didn't think about that. You know, it sounds like another episode. It's like uh, I, I, so he I, never, I, we could do a great episode on. Okay, Samson. we'll put, we'll put that. I, we'll put I, that. I, think I have some theories that people have not okay, heard before. So on this this is we're lining up. Anyway. So this is this is a preview, everyone. At some point, we are going <laughs> to line up with this Ryan. And Ryan, on that note, you you kind of we pre roll you tease this a little bit, but um, always want to you know always always like to share with people what you've got going on, what you're working on, and I know you're you're he- heading into a heavy research phase here, but you, you are working on a book on on the pre-Adamic idea. And, I, and I'll, I'm going to leave it there and let you talk about it because I think this will be a good teaser people because as I said in, in, in our, before we started the episode, our conversations, it's something that's very fascinating to me personally. And, and I, I'm very excited to have an episode on at some point because there's so many questions that come up, I think, you know, on our channels in different places, um, even in this space and even in the church space about, you know, what was happening then you know Cain gets kicked out, and they got to put God's got to put a mark on him so he doesn't get killed, and there's cities and all these things, and, and it, you know there's a lot of explanations for that, and people are comfortable with a lot of that in it being just time or whatever else, right? But there's a lot of interesting wording in the Bible that 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 points to, and then also just sort of in our geological history and everything, and everything else as you look around that that perhaps there was more there. The Bible just didn't, you know, Bibles just didn't doesn't touch on necessarily. Um, or it just doesn't touch on heavily. And uh, so, again, I was going to let you talk about it, but I, I'm, we just want to sh- let you share what kind of things you're working on and, uh, yeah, and things yeah, you're doing. Yes, and yes. I know you're doing, you do yeah, a lot of cool sure. stuff online as well with, um, you know, the, 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 theology live streams and all, and all the above. But, um, yeah, it's all coming back. It. I'm, I'm coming, I'm, I'm, I'm grinding this month and I'm going to come really with a lot of new content in uh, January. Okay. So I'm excited. So yes, yeah, so the book on, on the pre adamic world is, it's just that, right? So what I like to do is when I think of the biggest, and this is the blessing of God, right? Cause I grew up in my adult life living in the city in New York city with lots of people who in, who are very intelligent people who wanted to have spirited debates about the Bible, who do not believe the Bible. Mm. And when I look at the, the biggest obstacles for so many people were the flood, the wars in Canaan, right. and the age of the earth, right? Where people said, how? There's no way. Look at the geological record. Look at the fact that if a star is 20,000 light years away and we see it, 
That means that light has traveled from tw- for 20,000 years to reach us if we're looking at a star, right? There are many scientific things that are right in front of our eyes, and that's been a big stumbling block for many people. And I don't believe the Bible teaches a young earth model. And so, so that's one big motivation, right? I want to I knock down every big, the biggest obstacles that people have to say, oh, I, I won't believe the Bible. I won't even give it a look. Are you, are you saying that the earth has gray hairs in his beard? Absolutely. So just- <laughs> that's absolutely what I'm saying. Thing, yeah, <laughs> I wish I could grow a beard uh, like you guys. It's not too old, but it's not too young. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I definitely don't. I don't ascribe to a young Earth model, and the Bible never says the age of the Earth, right. right? And so what I, you know, so basically it's focusing on in between Genesis one and Genesis two. It's it's possible to have both, right? You can have young creation and an old Earth. Oh, right, right? absolutely. Humanity certainly, I believe, is you know roughly six to seven thousand years on earth. However, the earth and the inha- the original inhabitants of the earth predate that. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And that's what it, that's what you want to get into. It, exactly. And the, the original satanic rebellion. And of course, we'd look into is, is, is that Bigfoot? Oh, boy. Is Dude, that hey, Bigfoot? Let him talk about his book. <laughs> let him talk about his book. Right? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I believe that the angels were on earth first, right? And that's where the original satanic rebellion happened. And that's how Satan, we talk about birthright and dominion. Originally, uh, had the dominion over earth before it was given to Adam and that whole history. How does, why does Satan just show up evil, right? In Genesis three, he's already bad, he's, already right? bad. he's tempting Eve. He's already, and of course we can look to patches like Ezekiel 28, where yeah. it talks about Satan in this righteous time role, serving God in the garden of Eden, right? Wearing the jewels that says every precious jewel is like covering the Sardius, Topaz, Carbuncle, nine jewels. There was nine of the 12 that Aaron wore, as the high priest on his breastplate, right? So he was serving in this priestly role. So it gets into all of those things and really explains it and the importance in the scripture. And also, of course, I get into the history that this was, again, like the Nephilim, the common understanding, certainly in the ancient Hebrew world, absolutely. But even in the ancient church, the first and second century church, that was the common understanding that, the, that there was this, what's known as the gap theory or ruin or reconstruction where the the angelic rebellion happened. And when we see Genesis two, I mean, Genesis one verse two, and the earth is covered in water and says darkness over the face of the deep. That was the first flood. That was the first flood judgment that God put on the earth. And I even just looking at some of the comparisons between Genesis one, two and Genesis six, there are so many similarities, right? Obviously you have a flood. It says that, uh, you know, you have, uh, it says the spirit of God went over the waters. The Holy Spirit was going over the waters from the, that came from the deep, right? That's which is where the flood waters came from. They came from the deep and the winds of heaven in Noah's day. You have the Holy Spirit over the waters. And then God says, let there be light. Noah knew to get off the ark because he let a dove out flying, hovering over the waters. And that's when he knew now he can come into this new earth because the dove came back. So, right, so you have a sin involving fruit, right? Adam's, partakes of the fruit that was forbidden. Noah drinks fruits of the vine, gets drunk and gets caught up in the tent with Canaan, right? So you have animals supernaturally obeying God. God sends the animals to Adam to name all the animals. He sends all the animals to Noah to get on the ark, right? So there's lots and lots of parallels. I think the Bible's telling us Again, Layer. it's a repetition. The earth was judged in Genesis 1, and God is Look at you, Ryan. renovating. Look at you, Ryan Peterson. Look at you. I love this. You, hey, listen, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to read this. Nate might actually. This I'm hyped. Be, this, I'm hyped. Nate's, Nate's a big coloring book guy, but we might actually get him to read a book this time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I'm doing Maybe. children's books too, so I got that coming out too next year. All right, for I real. Love I am, it, man. I'm doing a children's book series. Yeah, so, so, we, we, um, yeah, but lots of stuff coming out. So I'm doing that. I'm doing a children's book series. Bible stories, uh, Bible series. I'm very happy to announce that this is my first time announcing this, that for all of my Spanish speaking followers and subscribers and readers, I've been asked so many times, the Spanish version of Judge on the Nephilim is coming yeah. out as well. It's actually done. I'm just getting it formatted. So there's been a big, I've gotten many, many requests over the years for that. So yeah, so that's coming out. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm also doing uh, Judge on the Nephilim in a, in a graphic novel Dude, format. Let's go. Sweet. Busy man. I was a youth leader in New York for 10 years. So kids and teens have been, always been a passion of mine before I ever had kids. Yeah. And I, I, I just told you know my wife, who's kind of like my creative partner, I'm like, you know, I got to do something 
you know, my content, as you guys know, is a little heavy for a child to read. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I got to yeah. do something that's going to target teens that a teenager would read that I would read if I was a teen. I loved graphic novels. I was a huge comic book fan. Um, I read, had hundreds and hundreds of comics. So I want to take the days of Noel, the fall names. I, I want to put it all in a graphic novel form. Love that. And so, so a, a teenager yeah. would grab it and really dig into right. it. Some scripture. Dude, awesome. I love it. I, I love it. And I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, all it's, all your, good. Uh, it's all good. Because, uh, I mean, all those topics are fascinating, and we've been wanting to talk about it a lot on the show, which is great that you can come back on, because we've had people hint at it, and a lot of people ask us questions about, you know, like you said, the, there's this pre-Adamite vibe going on, and and a lot of Christians are don't know what to think about those kind of concepts. But uh, we do know that it, it feels very much like the Bible is kind of like Star Wars. It starts sort of in the middle, and then it exactly. sort of... I mean, George Lucas blew it and went back and tried to <laughs> tell that story. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we're an '80s show. We talk about this, and that's kind of how it starts. You, that's it. And I think that's a New Hope, episode four. We were we we're literally starting in episode four. It's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful analogy. But I'm going to do a much yeah. better prequel saga. So don't Thank worry you. about it. I got Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you for having good taste See? in, in See? movies as well. <laughs> that's an important thing on this show. A- I I hate sand. Yeah, I <laughs> and a lot of people not only start at episode four, they start at the second half of episode four, and they just go right to the New Testament, and they don't understand the Old Testament. And yeah, I think yeah. that we've done a lot of work on this show to make sense of the Old Testament. Like it's 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 as it's as crazy as you can imagine, and the wildest stuff happens. And we appreciate guys like you that that have put time and effort into the research and bring the Old Testament to life and say, hey, it was messy and it was crazy, but it happened. Here's why it happened. And here's some of these these themes that keep coming down, specifically genetics. All our listeners go go out and get Ryan's book, Judgment of the Nephilim. You got a bunch of books out now. Final and Nephilim uh, follow you on well. yeah. And then social media. I, I know you're on Instagram. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so um so my website's judgmentofthenephilim.com. The books are there. I got study guys, documentaries, all that good stuff. Also my Instagram, my Facebook, and my YouTube are all judgment of the Nephilim, one word. So you can find me yeah. there. Like I said, I have lots of content up there. I have two seven-part series on the Nephilim. I have stuff on End Times. I did Thursday Night Theology show for for a year where that we cover all any any topic under the sun. So check it out. Feel free to DM me, send me questions. Always glad to uh, answer. That's right. Yeah. yeah, we got we always tease with another episode. So we got we got Samson, Samson. Man. and, and, the, it's and gonna, the, I'm, it's pretty, gonna blow people's minds. Trust me, I have a very unique. Okay, we're gonna Samson. get you back on the schedule, Ryan. Right? Yeah, we are. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, that. thanks, man. So good to see you, and uh, thanks to thank, thanks yeah. to uh, thanks to Erica as well for being really really gracious with all of our our switching and 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 moving of this. So we appreciate you spending time. Yeah, we yeah. It's all yeah, man. It's great to see your face too. It's been, yeah. we, we need to make it not not almost a hundred episodes between. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, we'll get this one on the book. We have. Yeah, we, we have. Do, a we're figuring things out. We're starting to get organized, bro. You guys are leveling up. <laughs> look at you guys. You guys look are leveling out, up. No, out. no. You, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me on. And you know, it's been a hundred episodes because you guys have just done such a phenomenal job. Thanks, seriously. Man. So I, I, I'm like blown Thanks, away. Man. Keep do keep doing it. You're. It's it's a huge. I'm seeing the impact. So like I said, you you mm-hmm. guys are picking up the baton for some heavy hitters in bringing people who may not who are into the paranormal and the supernatural, but not so much into the Bible and getting them into it. Awesome. So it's, it's amazing work. So, uh, keep Thanks, it up bro. and, um, you know, look forward to coming back Thanks, on. Brother. Yeah. Let's go. No, appreciate you. All right, man. All Thanks, right, man. God bless.